we had to make one of the hardest decisions we've ever faced. Tonight, the weakest cook was... Mary, please bring up your dish. It's a steelhead trout and a brown butter cauliflower mash. What are you thinking right now? I think the flavors are there. The plating is not what I wanted. Hmm. Why is it so lumpy? The cauliflower wouldn't puree the, the way I wanted it to. It's not so good. It doesn't have the sophistication that I would hope to see from you. The only thing that can give you a safe haven here is the fish. I know. What is this here? There's a pin bone. A bone in your fish is a big no-no. I really, I truly apologize. Maybe five minutes in, I started feeling frazzled. This was a game of strategy, as well as cooking. You know what I think? I think Jennifer and Terry want you out. You know that? I do. You think that's gonna happen here? I really hope not. I don't wanna go home. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, this fish is not pink in the middle. It could be a real shame for you. Oh, God. It's pink. <laughs> That's about as good as it gets, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> it's spectacular. Thank you. I don't know if you're gonna recover, though, because the rest of the dish it's way below your capability. I know. I am nervous. It doesn't matter how well I've done up until now. Every single time you cook in the MasterChef Canada kitchen, you need to show them that you deserve to be there. Veronica, please bring up your dish. This dish is me on a plate because it's cooking techniques that I know and love. I made a Thai-style fried red mullet with a fish dipping sauce and a papaya and carrot slaw. And what was the biggest challenge in you pulling this dish off? The biggest challenge was probably the fact that I only have one fish. One chance to get it right. <laughs> Correct. Red mullet is a delicate, sweet, gentle fish. I'm a little surprised that you put it up against such a, a big, almost fiery sauce. It's almost counterintuitive. Oh. But it works. Thank you, Chef. Sweet, acidic, but very complimentary. And what I see here is nothing short of a love affair with food. That's the Veronica that we want to see. Thank you, Chef. This is typical Asian, using every single part of the fish. You make good use of the bone, and I'm just gonna dig into that. This is exactly how I would have done it. I am so happy to see you finally bring out the Asian in your cooking. I'm happy to see you happy. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Jeremy, please bring up your dish. It's called sinigang. It's monkfish with a tamarind and tomato broth with a lot of Asian vegetables, Chinese eggplant, bok choy, and broccoli. Jeremy. Chef. Do you think Terry and Jennifer was trying to sabotage you with the monkfish? Of course they were. I hope that they didn't hit the mark. You know, in the Philippines, they use really cheap cuts of fish to make that dish. But did you know the monkfish is called the poor man's lobster? No. You should not use the monkfish for this particular dish. It's too refined, it's too good. That's like using filet mignon in a stew. <clears throat> I think it needs a little bit more complexity in the dish. You probably could have kept it on the bone. That would have done nice. It would provide even more flavor. Yeah. I am a little bit disappointed, but it's nicely cooked. Mm -hmm. Sean, please bring up your dish. It's important to wow people with a plate, and that's what I try and do on every dish I make. 
got a baked sturgeon on a crust with a citrus wine butter sauce, red jasmine rice, and sauteed green and yellow beans with bacon. When I came to visit you at the cook station, you were hoping to make a rose. It's not quite a rose. It's more like a roll. <laughs> no, I don't think the rose quite uh, bloomed, did it? No, it didn't make it. I don't know whether it's beginner's luck or not, but that piece of sturgeon is about as perfectly cooked as I think anyone could get it. It's the plating and the choice of some of the ingredients that you need to work on. Look at the size of the spoonful of rice. It's bigger than the fish. The beans, the way they're sort of spread out like that, it's about restraint. It's about elevating and adding some sophistication polish and refinement to a dish. This doesn't hit that mark. It's well done or medium rare? <laughs> this is something that I just, I don't understand it. You want to have a food truck, right? Absolutely. If you don't start to focus a little bit more, you might not be in the food truck. You might be just doing service on it. I don't think I cut it. We've tasted all your dishes, and now we need to take a few moments to discuss. Okay. Wow, that was unpredictable. One minute, you're on top, and the next, you might be going home. There were some badly conceived ideas. I hate it when they don't respect the product. Because they have some beautiful fish. I want to taste the fish. I'm pretty scared that this could be the end of my journey. I think I'm in trouble. This competition's going to change dramatically right now. It could be quite the upset. You were all asked to create a stunning dish starring the beautiful fish that Terry and Jennifer gave you. Two of you hooked us with amazing creations. The first great dish was made by a home cook who often doubted their abilities. But tonight, they served a beautifully plated dish that blew the competition out of the water. And the home cook that we're talking about is... Jacqueline. Congratulations. I'm so happy. It's really unbelievable what I've accomplished so far and the confidence that I'm building here. And now for the best dish of the night. It was made by a home cook who experienced a bit of a turning point. Tonight, they wowed us with a dish that came straight from their heart. Congratulations, Veronica. This means so much to me. It's just nice to hear positive feedback about what I just consider a regular dinner at my house. I'm just trying to show them who I am. You'll both be captains on the next team challenge. And now, for some news that's harder to swallow. Tonight, we will only be calling up two home cooks. Both struggled to keep their heads above water. Sean and Mary, please come forward. I still have some fight left in me. I don't quit, I don't give up. I love my family and I miss them so much, but this is where I want to be right now and I need to stay here. Both of you bring so much heart to this competition and so much willingness to learn. But tonight, the components on your plate overshadowed your beautifully cooked fish. And as a result, we had to make one of the hardest decisions we've ever faced. Tonight, the weakest cook was... Sean. Oh, my God. <gasps> you get ready. You got it. It's OK. It's OK. It's OK. Mary, please head back to your station. I'm feeling relieved. I'm feeling scared. I need to try harder, and I'm so ready to do that. Sean, 
You may work on an auto assembly line, but your cooking is anything but mass produced. And although we're going to miss those funny little garnishes, we are sure that your wife and family will be delighted to have you home. Now come up here and say goodbye. You got it. Thanks, guys. It's a dream come true. All I ever wanted was to be on MasterChef Canada and get an apron, and it happened. Come up and grab your apron. Yeah! The best thing I'm taking away from this competition is knowing that I have what it takes to be a great cook. Proof is in the pudding. Oh my god, they're so good. That brings a smile to my face. Oh, man. <laughs> it's bittersweet. You take the apron off, you lay it down, you know your journey here's done, but I get to go back to my family. Every single one of you are winners. I love you guys. I'm not giving up on my food truck dreams. They're just gonna take a little bit longer.